Hello, it's been a while since I've shown you my face, mainly because of lockdown, but we don't need to talk about lockdown, who wants to hear about that anymore? I decided that I want to make some resin today, so I thought I would bring my camera along with me. I've only been doing resin for about five months, I don't fully know what I'm doing, I would never claim to be any kind of professional with it, but I'm getting to grips with it, so I thought this could be a good opportunity to make a little, slightly useful, hopefully, to someone video, um, where I take you along with me and explain my process. So let's get into it. So I just want to start off by showing you things I've made in the past. Here are some of the pieces I've made before. These are gummy bear earrings. This is what I'd usually use my leftover resin for at the end of maybe making something else. That's why they're a bit mismatch. Um, but I have made a few specific ones. Like this one, I put a little dried flower in and then filled that up. I just think these are a really cute, small project to do. Um, and this is a comb I made. These can be quite difficult to get right. You have to get the right amount of resin in there, otherwise it can dry a little sharp and then it would catch on your hair. And if you get the consistency of the resin wrong, then it will be too soft. So it's quite a difficult one to get right. Moving on to the hair clips. These were something I had to get the gist of. Obviously making the hair clip design part itself was fine, but then it's when you're adding on the attachment at the back. I managed to flood a couple of these. So this one doesn't really work as well as it should. It has resin in the hinges. This is my favourite piece that I've made. I used a dried flower that I'd saved from the first flowers that my boyfriend had ever got me and I did it in about five different stages so it took a long time because obviously you've got to wait for it to set but I love how it turned out. It's such a pretty piece. I plan to get a little light to just sit under it so that it can be a really pretty lamp type of thing. So here are the things that I used while I was doing the resin and things that you will probably need as well if you wanted to give this a go yourself. First off, you will need some sort of resin. I would suggest a hobbyist type of resin. This is the one that I use. It is from Amazon and it is designed for hobbyists, really. Anything stronger, you would need some sort of mask protection for your breathing. And then in terms of tools, um, I like to use the silicone pots the best. You do get little plastic pots that come with this resin and because they're so tiny, I do find they come in handy. But with the silicone ones, they are obviously going to last a lot longer. The plastic ones are good but they'll only last a couple of uses and then you have to throw them away. It's obviously not very good for the environment. Um, the silicone ones obviously you can just let it dry, wash them out and use them again and I just find them really handy. I prefer those ones a lot. Um, you'll obviously need something to mix it with. Lolly sticks I find are more convenient. I'm also going to be using these pipettes just because I'm going to be doing a few finer bits today. Tweezers come in really handy for things like pressed flowers or if you're working with a lot of tiny things cocktail sticks just for poking out air holes things like that most essential are your gloves you do not want to get any resin on your hands whatsoever it is really vital that you get yourself some gloves i have a spare pair handy as well just in case these ones rip next we are going to talk about molds you can't do a huge amount with resin without molds you can do things on canvases but that's not what i'm doing today so I've got a couple of moulds that I haven't used before. Um, this key one, which I bought years ago, and this buttons one. These two, I believe, are actually meant for icing on cakes. Um, so if I don't fill up the buttons one fully, it should work functionally, but we'll see. This is more of a test run on that one. Um, I'm going to be using the comb and this bookmark, but for the bookmark, I'm only going to be putting a plain layer on, and then I'm going to try something fun with it. I have these hair clip ones. Um, I do have the hair clip attachments for this as well, which obviously you would need if you were doing this. Um, so there's three different types of hair clips here. And I also have these little pendants. I've never done anything in these kinds of things before. So you can use the mould that came with it, so it can be a protruding thing over it, but I'm just going to put something in it and put some resin on it to try and keep them flat. I do also have these guitar picks, which I usually just use for leftovers, but I have a plan for these today. Um, and I have my faithful gummy bears, which I will just be using for leftovers. Okay, so now moving on to the extras. First off, I want to talk about these. These are colour pigment powders. I think there's a big brand that a lot of people use called Mika powders, but these are just, again, off of Amazon, something kind of cheap and cheerful. Apparently you can also use acrylic paint, but that isn't something I've tried. But these powders work really well. You just use a really small amount and it gets quite a strong colour in there so this is definitely something I'd recommend. Next up you want things to put inside of your resin a lot of the time so 
I found these at just a craft shop, these little keys, they're really cute. I thought I'd try putting them in these hair clips. Or you've got things that were also there, like little beads. Obviously it depends on what you're doing and what you'd want. Something else I love using these, these are gilding flakes. Gold is usually the most popular, but this is something I came across recently. It's like an autumn themed one, and I used it for this hair clip. I just love how it comes out. You've got a nice range of the tones in there, and it just it comes in really nicely into the resin. So, starting off with the most important thing, safety, put your gloves on. I'm putting my gloves on. It took a while, they're actually quite small, but they fit, there was no tears. You gotta check for that because you do not want this on your skin. I cannot stress that enough. It is so important. So, I poured B in, is part A and part B. It says in the instructions to put B in first, though B is your hardener. And then I mixed this very slowly for about five minutes. I did. I quickly show you the speed I was doing it, I was doing it nice and slow, but then obviously I sped up the footage because you don't want to watch me do that for five minutes. Um, so you want to make sure you give it a good mix, but again, nice and slow because otherwise you're going to get air bubbles absolutely everywhere. And then the first mould I used was this bookmark one. I decided to just do a thin layer of clear, only halfway filling the mould so that I could then work on it later, which you'll see me do in a little bit, and then come back to that. And then I did a similar thing for this, except with these hair clip pieces I was filling it with stuff. So I only put a little bit in so that it would hold these pieces in place, because if you did it full, then it's going to move around. If it's got space to move, it will. It will float and move around. So I put a little bit in, and I put in the keys and the beads where I wanted them, with my tweezers, they come in very handy. I plan to add little splashes of colour later on with um, more resin once this bit is set, like sort of dot it around. Same with this one, I started off the same kind of technique, just spreading a thin layer on it um, and then added in what I wanted to. And then again, I want to put on just a little bit more colour with the resin once this is set. As much as I planned to add in a bit of colour when it was set, I also wanted to just add in a touch while it was wet because when you do it can sometimes have this really nice marble effect and it kind of blends into the clear and has this really fun look to it that I wanted to achieve with this. So you can see me just doing that now. And then I added a stronger pink into the pink I'd already just made here to add another tone. Um, so when you are mixing colours, if you know you want to make similar colours, it's always good to start with your lighter colour because then you you know if you've got any left over, it doesn't go to waste, it can just go towards the next colour. I did also add a little bit of glitter to this because glitter looks great on everything with resin. So I had some left over here. So what I did, because I knew with gummy bears I always turn them into earrings, so you need to have equal amount in both. So just, you know, when you're doing that, make sure you have enough for both of those. Next up, I was doing the comb. So I wanted to use those flakes that I mentioned earlier. So what I did was I just mixed it straight into the resin, but they're quite large pieces. So when you're mixing in, you need to make sure you're breaking them up into smaller pieces because otherwise you're just gonna have huge clumps. So I mixed those directly into my clear resin and then just lay that out onto the back part of it. But with the thinner parts of the comb, I kind of spoon fed it in almost with the lolly stick just because it's, they're so fine and if you get it over the edge of that, it can be really awkward to fix up later on. So I just tried to be really careful about my placement here. So it took quite a while and I did end up with some air bubbles that I then had to pop and go back over with later once it had set. Um, I did also add some yellow to this, I just thought it would be a really fun contrast to have a bit of a merge going from the yellow into the clear with all those tones from the gilding flakes. I just think it could merge really nicely and those two tones go together brilliantly, the autumn tones with the golden sort of yellow, they look amazing. Unfortunately the pendants didn't really turn out how I wanted them to, they still turned out okay. 
but they didn't turn out how I envisioned them. So I have this lovely pressed flower from an old bunch of flowers um, and I laid the pendant on top, drew around it so that I had the right shape for what would fit inside of it. And then I mixed up some purple and I put that on the back as a very thin layer for the basis because yellow and purple, wonderful contrast. When I first put the flower on that purple I thought, oh this is going to look great, it's going to look really lovely. But the flower absorbed the majority of that purple so there wasn't really much purple left so I ended up just putting the clear on top straight away which I wasn't going to do but because it had already absorbed the colour I didn't feel like there was much saving it so I just put the clear on top and it did actually help a little bit it kind of pulled out that purple a little bit more because the flower had the clear to absorb it wasn't just going to absorb all the purple um, so there is still some purple there but it definitely doesn't have that strong contrast that I was going for um, and I ended up using some of that on the gummy bears again um, and finally I went on to do the keys so I tried to mix up this copper and I put it in with the purple because I just thought it would give it a warmer tone rather than just a boring sort of tone um, and this was the first time I've ever used a pipette with resin and honestly it was more hassle than it was worth it helped in terms of getting it into those really fine details of the key but it took ages to get it up the pipette in the first place and then I couldn't get all of the resin out it was kind of just spitting bubbles at me little air pockets it made it a little worse in some points too so honestly I just don't think I'd use the pipettes again for the second key I tried putting a little bit of definition on the details so I took some of the powder and just put it on my finger and dabbed that over the ridges that come up on the key just on some of those bits that will show forward so hopefully when the key comes out it will have a little bit of a gold shimmer on some of those finer points The very last one that I did was the guitar pick. I had some confetti type pieces of paper left from a completely unrelated project that I'd done not that long ago. So I just wanted to sprinkle those into it really and I surrounded it in the clear. Um, yeah, it's quite a simple one but it was just an idea I had. Here you can see me just using my gouache paints to paint on the clear layer of resin that I put on the bookmark piece. With the clear layer being at the base part of this, that's essentially the front. So I started with my highlights and then went over it and over it. My idea for this was to make it kind of abstract lemons. I just wanted to keep it kind of simple. Um, and then I just put some purple blobs at the back because I thought it would look nice. And then I mixed a kind of blue with a bit of a green to make a kind of deep green because I didn't actually have a colour like that and I added a bit of black just to make it a bit darker because I wanted there to be that contrast. And I just poured that over on the background part of my bookmark. I really like that colour that I made. And then I just used leftovers from that colour to make a small button. Um, I also put just a tad on parts of two of the hair clips I was making um, because I wanted to put a couple of different colours on there and with that colour being really earthy I thought it worked quite nicely with the keys. And then I went over the comb with a few bits because I had to pop a few bubbles and fill those in um, and it also had just sank a little bit so it had that sharpness to it so I tried to just fill it out a little bit more. And here are the final things. So with this comb, it did still end up being a little bit sharp at the bottom, so what I'll probably do at some point is just sand down the edges and neaten that up just a tad. The hair clips mostly worked out. I really like the sequins. I think that has a really nice effect. But this one, um, it was quite lumpy at the back, so I'm going to have to sand that down before I can attach it to the actual clip. But I really like how it looks, so I think once I've attached it to the clip, it'll be a really nice hair clip. As you can see there, it's a bit bumpy. 
Um, these ones I really love, they give off such a mystical, secret garden type of vibe. I really like them. And this one I'm calling my Valentine's Day clip because I just think it's really sweet. These are very lumpy. Um, I think if I was to try and fix them maybe I could sand them down because they're very unappealing in my opinion. The keys, I actually really like them, I just wish that the colour was a bit stronger because if I was to put this in with other resin I don't know if it would really show up that well. The bookmark is really nice but it has a strange lump on the back and I'm not sure how that happened. But I really like the painted effect on it, it's not something I've really tried properly before and I love it. One of those picks is actually from some leftovers I did, but I really like the confetti idea one. And then this is one of the buttons. I do need to drill the holes through to make it actually work. It was too thin otherwise. And the gummy bears, as per usual, I've already put in the screws here. This is all the finished pieces. If you made it all the way to the end, Thank you so much for watching. I know this was quite a long video, but because it was a process video, I really wanted to get as much information as I could in there. So thank you if you made it all the way to the end. Um, because I'm trying to grow my channel, I would really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe, or even just giving me some feedback in the comments is really appreciated. Every little thing like that helps when I'm trying to grow my channel. So thank you so much again, and I will see you next time. Bye.